Hey everybody, welcome to, one moment, welcome to Alex Crossing, the daily wholesome Animal Crossing stream where I talk about random topics and just kind of hang out with you guys while I play Animal Crossing. If you enjoy this kind of daily Animal, Animal Crossing, oh my goodness, every stream, uh, if you enjoy this kind of Animal Crossing content, be sure to follow, be sure, or be sure to subscribe, be sure to leave a like, and uh, yeah. Be sure to um, uh, comment below if you have anything to say, and I do hope you have a lot to say because I like to read your guys' comments every Friday before I go see KK Slider. And without further ado, let's get right into this. So, last we left off, we just had a kind of a lazy, fun Sunday. I got my Christmas sweater that I really like. It's very warm and cozy. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all that happened. Not much happened on Sunday. It was just kind of a whatever stream, and today might be very similar. I already have Excite Bike. It doesn't work. Thank you. Oh yeah, I got Excite Bike, and the emulation on it doesn't work. <laughs> Uh, well, they did their best. Um, what do I got? Let's read this. Also recently said us is a valuable Triceratops tail. Nice! It's the tail for the Triceratops I got. Excellent. Well, let's get our inventory situated. Also, I gotta run by Tom Nooks and check his turnip prices, because I have those now. Uh, our turnip prices. Uh, stock... But not st is it stock prices? Stalk prices, of course, because they're, you know, they're radishes. Recently sent us is a resident amber. Oh, amber is so cool. I used to have this amber neck necklace with a mosquito in it. It was super rad. The trilobite, an ancient life form. Hmm, I should see about buying myself another amber necklace. Like fossilized tree sap with an amble with like an ancient insect trapped in it is super cool. Cur currently, yeah, money, whatever HRA. I, I really don't pay much attention to the HRA in the, in the games. It is a way to like kind of win at something, and I think that's cool, but, like, I mostly just try to relax and do my own thing in these games, so having letters that tell me how I should make my house is a bit, uh, lame, I guess I'd say. There's a lot about this game is about freedom and being able to make your own decisions, and I never really much cared for the Happy, Happy Home Academy, because I don't like to theme my house after one idea. That being said, I will, that could be an additional endgame thing I could, I could try for. Anyway, what all do we have to do? First, let's go ahead and stop at the dump to see if there's any interesting furniture or items that were dropped off. I haven't played for an entire day, so it makes sense if there was something like that. Let me go ahead and hit the rock, though. No money on this rock. All that's here is some stationery, and what do we got here? Baggage yeah, shirt. Let's see how that looks. If I don't like how it looks, I'll just put it right back down or sell it. Kind of love it. I kind of love it. Anyway, what's this? Honeybee paper. That'll that'll do. That will definitely do. All right, let's give the mon old money rock a try. Kabonk. Nope. Not quite the money rock. Okay. 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 I did a little bit of research in my day off. Uh, I was playing a game called Kenshi. It's really good, but I did watch a bunch of Animal Crossing content as well. And I think I heard somewhere that you can plant a money tree. But I've I, I've heard about this for years, but I've never actually found out how it works. So let's go ahead and look it up. I, I believe what you can do is actually plant. Uh, I, I have heard that if I dig the hole there, it still glows, meaning that I could plant money there. Animal Crossing, how to plant money tree. All right, how to grow a uh, money tree? Um, not in New Horizons. I don't. I'm, I don't. I'm not playing that one. Profiting. Okay. Well, all these seem to. Wow, the fandom wiki only has articles for New Horizons. That's a bit of an oversight. Anyway, I'm crossing GameCube. The guide. Uh, money trees. First things first, you need at least a thousand bells. Popular theory is the amount of bells varies affect the chance of the money tree sprouting. Uh, oh, okay. Animal Crossing on the GameCube in order to grow a money tree, you must first find the glowing patch of soil within your town. Buried there will be a thousand bells. To grow a money tree, you must bury the amount of bells you wish to grow. 30,000 bells is the maximum you can plant. If the tree grows successfully, it will bear three 30,000 bells, equaling 90,000 bells. No, you don't need to go to Golden Shuffle for this. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and dig up the 1,000 and then replant it and see how that goes. Big profits. Da, 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 da. Right, let's give it a shot. All right, so we have our money. Oh, did I remember to put that tweet in? The, I forgot to send the tweet out. Look at that. Look at me forgetting to advertise again. Anyway, got 1,000 bells. 
Alright, let's plant that bad boy. And we're just gonna go ahead and bury that right under the ground. Alright, cool. So hopefully that will grow into a money tree. We'll leave it we'll leave it alone for now. Um, let's go make our way to Nooks and check the turnip prices. If they're higher than the 170 I got them for, I'll sell them. Just because I, I would like to make a profit off of them. Even if it isn't a tiny one. A tidy profit versus tiny profit. So yeah, the name of this, uh, the name of today's episode actually represents the uh, topic I'd like to talk about, which is the idea of brain candy. What's brain candy? Well, you know how like candy is the kind of food that you eat for the taste and texture, not so much for its nutritional value or for how filling it is. Well, brain candy is the same way. These are thoughts that don't really serve you in any way. They're just fun to think about. So like a lot of um. What do I get? What do I got? A dace. Alright, I already got a dace. I don't, actually, I may not have caught a dace. I'll run it by the museum once I catch more fish and get some fossils. But, um... Yeah, uh, a popular... For example, a popular style, or a popular variation on brain candy is what if this fictional character met another fictional character? You're not going to gain anything by thinking about it, but it is fun to think about. Or what if questions are almost always um brain candy they they are they don't serve any purpose but they are primarily just there because they are fun to think about and my favorite styles of brain candy animal crossing is just like kenshi exactly like kenshi man kenshi's awesome i i love that game so far i'm having so much fun with it it's um i, I don't know how to explain it i'm just having a good time fun things crazy things just keep happening it's great and I'm learning so much as I play. Like, I feel like I'm genuinely getting better at the game. But, um... Yeah, so brain candy is the kind of idea that it's just... It's a thought that's fun to think about. And did you see any bug people? Not yet. I did see a lot of horned people. I think most of my party currently is horned people. Uh... For those who don't know, Kenshi is a... Uh... Is an RPG you can get on Steam right now, and online. In which it is a... Simulation... It, it, it is trying to be a simulation of a post-apocalyptic alien world, and I think it's succeeding because, well, you're not... Okay, so you know what people, whenever people talk about wanting to live in a post-apocalyptic world, like The Walking Dead, or Fist of the North Star, or Mad Max, the response is, are, is like, yeah, you may want to live in that world, but you're not going to be Kenshiro, you're not going to be Max. And you're not going to be uh, Rick Grimes or any of those heroic characters. You are... You, you'd be like one of the, you know, dirty scavengers just trying to make a living. And that's exactly what Kenshi's about. You are... You're a nobody in that game. You're just a scavenger trying to make a living. Okay, because I've been wondering why food's been going so fast. We are, we are eating this nearby town out of food. Like, they're running out of food. <laughs> Which is really funny. But, uh, yeah, uh, Hammer was pointing out to me that horned people in Kenshi eat a ton of food. I'm like, heck, I, dang, I, I, I need to get more variety in my party. Because right now it's all, it's all horned people except for one human, and this human has one leg. But, uh, yeah, I would bring candies or ideas such as, like, what if, uh, what if androids exist? What if robots existed? What if, uh, we were actually all being led and governed by a secret race of lizard people? Fun ideas like that, where you're just thinking about what the repercussions could be. Like, a good example of another piece of brain candy is the Matrix movies. The new one just came out recently, so I, I've been rewatching the older ones. And, uh, yeah, it's like, what if we are living in a computer simulation? Which is, um, which is funny, because, like, any of the- anything supernatural or bizarre that exists in the world of, ma of the Matrix is explained by a glitch in the Matrix. So, like, ghosts, uh, luck a deja vu, simple little things like that, little phenomena that can't be explained, are explained by glitches in the Matrix. Which I think to, think is really fascinating as an idea. Because we use, like, religion and folklore to explain the un unexplainable in real life. What if I was fishing right now? Yeah. Brain candy. Um... Wow. Yeah, I, um... But I had, I had a really interesting piece of brain candy earlier that I was, you know, sucking on. And maybe I shouldn't say it like that. <laughs> maybe, hmm, maybe I shouldn't say it that way exactly. Uh, but 
I was watching this, um, What Goes Into a Villain series on YouTube. Or not What Goes Into a Villain, like, uh, What Makes a Villain series. I can't quite remember it, but it's, it was about, uh, the Joker from The Joker, Arthur Fleck, and, like, what made him into a villain and what went wrong with him to make him into him. And I, what I found myself thinking during this process is, in a world, oh boy, here we go. First I talk about the Joker, now this. In a world where society, civil civilization, did not exist, how would mental illness be handled? And would it be frowned, frowned upon? Because a lot of things that are defined as mental illness or behavior disorders are defined that way purely because it's incompatible with modern society and people. He's the Goka, baby. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, it makes me think. Like, for example, antisocial personality disorder is someone who just has issues and does things that are considered to be antisocial, but why is a human being to be required to be social in the first place? Well, that's because some dude with money and a, some dude with money and a book told, said so. And there's nothing about the natural world that says it has to be anything. It's like we were talking about earlier is should is kind of a thing I want to avoid because well, when it comes to the natural world, it really just does what it wants to. And we think we've distanced ourselves from it, but we really haven't. That's why outcomes seem seemingly random. But I was just thinking about that. Like, is that a... Is the problem with mental illness purely caused by societal incompatibility? Because there are certain things where it's like, all right... These people are in actual agony and need help. Like, certain certain people with schizophrenia just cannot cope and actually need to be watched because they're actually sick. And it's, it's a shame that that's what it's like for them. Like, having someone inside your head that insults you all the time is a problem with certain people. And, um, I wish them the best of luck. That's a really unfortunate condition to have. But other things like antisocial personality disorders, uh... A lot of what's considered to be autistic, or falling on the autism spectrum, is purely just societal incompatibility. Like, being incompatible with the systems that are in place. I don't know, just some brain candy I had. Like, again, it's not gonna lead anywhere. I'm not going to present my idea to a panel of judges or write an essay or anything. It's just a thought I had. And these are the kind of things I like to think about. These are... And maybe it's, um... And a lot of them are very, seem to be very disturbing. Like, that one could be seen as very disturbing by a lot of people. And you know what? That's fine. I, I understand that not everyone's comfortable talking about everything. Like, I love talking about the nature of humanity, the nature of the soul. Like, what makes a person a person in the first place. The nature of free will and other such things. But, like, I know some people just, like, get really upset when I talk about it. Like, um, my girlfriend, whenever I talk about... The nature of the human, uh, the nature of the human mind and central nervous system, basically just being a computer made out of meat, and the idea that our emotions are simply accidents, uh, really, really, really upsets her. And I don't personally find it upsetting because I'm, I can look at it and go, well, I mean, who cares if emotions are chemicals in my brain? If everything is, that means everything is chemicals, and I'd have to trust the chemicals in my brain to tell me that my emotions are chemicals in my brain, so now will I... Uh, the point is, it doesn't matter if they're chemicals or not. And saying that your emotions are chemicals is no reason to ever dismiss your emotions or your feelings. It's just fun to think about. This world is imperfect. My name is not important. Yeah, no. I don't go that far. Uh, what I can say is, like, other ideas I have is, like, when I'm watching anything involving AI, is my default state is to treat anything with artificial intelligence and fiction as if it's, as if it's completely human. Because the day when that happens, I'm not going to be the person getting killed by the robots for mistreating them. <laughs> I'm going to be the good human. I'm not going to be a slave, of course, but I'm going to be like, no, nah, I didn't mistreat you guys. Like, if I ever get a Roomba, I'm not going to be mean to it. Or anything with any sort of AI, any thing with any sort of AI, I don't think it should be mistreated. Like, uh, I was playing Buddy Simulator 1984 yesterday, and that was really fun. But I'm not going to mistreat the buddy in the simulator. 
just because it's uh, that's just not the kind of person I am. And also, when I'm ever in, whenever I'm in fiction, if a robot does something evil, I will judge that robot. I did not mistreat the hammer AI. I was good to him. It was very good to him. It was an accident. I wasn't expecting him to die so horribly like that. The thing is, if the hammer, the new hammer AI has no memory of that, he's basically dead. Like, that a that hammer AI from the demo is basically dead if the full game version has no memory of those events. And that's gonna be really sad, because then it'll just be Hammer 2. Like, if the game starts over when I get it, it's going to be very sad, because that means we're dealing with Hammer 2, not Hammer 1. Uh, but yeah, like, I, for example, I watched the movie um, Ex Machina recently. And that's a movie about basically a man trying to create artificial intelligence. However, as he, as the AIs grow closer and closer to human intelligence, the measures he has to take to keep them contained become more and more inhuman. Because it's like, oh, well now this I'm no longer working on a, a new thing in my lab. I now have a simple person that I have been basically experimenting on and torturing. Man, I really hope no one clicks on this stream while I'm talking about this. Anyway, yeah, um, wholesome, I, I make wholesome Animal Crossing streams. So yeah, this man tortured this person. It was, uh, it was I watched a movie about it. <laughs> Jeez. I, uh, but anyways, the whole point of the movie at some point, uh, spoilers for Ex Machina, so plug your ears. It's a great movie, I recommend you go watch it, um, but I had a real problem with the ending. Uh, and so what happened? It happens towards the end of the movie is, okay, so the, the premise of the movie is this guy from a tech company is pulled in, a guy who's completely unaware of all of this, and he is used as pretty much a guinea pig to test the AI and basically be a Turing test for it. Uh, however, she befriends him and their interest in each other begins to become somewhat romantic. And it's really fascinating, and at one point in the movie, he tries to free her, and at this point, it is revealed that she was just using him to- Oh no, my snowball. She was just using him to escape. I need to make a snowman one of these days. And so, at this, the movie is like, yeah, she did it, or the all the cinematography seems to be very uh, cheerful. However, I was upset at her because I was I never thought of her as just a simple computer program. See, I've seen way too many sci-fi movies to dismiss AI as less than human. And so, when she did that, I went, Oh, so you're an awful person who mistreated someone who genuinely wanted to help you. And you're terrible. You're a terrible person, and... Yeah, you mistreated someone who genuinely wanted to help you. And didn't want to use you or mistreat you, and he saw you as a person who he wanted to help. And so, that created an interesting conflict for me, because I'm just like... Yeah, she's a human, but she's awful. She's an awful- she's a person, but she's an awful one. And so I had trouble accepting that, you know? And so in my scenario, I, I'd be just like, alright, well, what should happen to that AI is exactly what should happen to a person in that scenario. And that's why I, uh, it's just an- again, brain candy, brain candy. There's a lot of stuff like that in science fiction. Like, um, I watched Total Recall recently, which de deals with memories and- what happens when our memories are edited, or uh, RoboCop, basically what happens when you make a robot cop. No. <laughs> what happens when uh, the uh, a company runs the police force. Really terrifying ideas altogether. So I'm so rambly lately. I, I lack the focus I had in the first few videos. I'm still playing Animal Crossing and having a good time, don't get me wrong, but I just have other things on my brain right now, that's all. Let's go ahead and check this rock for money. Do you have money, Mr. Rock? No. I have no money, human. Farewell. This fades away. Be kind to your robots, because you never know what's going to happen. Um... Same thing goes for clones or aliens or really anyone. Basically, the golden rule, the golden rule is such a simple thing that should be applied very universally. Treat someone how you'd want to be treated. Um. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I make mistakes, but it's one of those things that applies somewhat universally. 
at the end of the day, no matter how crazy you make your setting and how, like, wacky and out there you make it, good is still good and evil is still evil. They're one of the things that we defined very early on as human beings. And you, if you are doing something despicable, like hiding behind gray morality is very difficult. Or not really difficult, but like, I'd say, hmm, how would I put it? I don't know if it counts, that's, that's the way I'd put it, it's like, like, just because you do something evil that you don't feel is evil doesn't make you morally gray. It just makes you evil, but like, dishonest about it, I guess. Like, I think it's one of the most satisfying things about Breaking Bad is when Walt finally stops making excuses and just goes, Yeah, I did it all for me. I did all of this for one person and that was me. And fully accepts responsibility for his actions. And I think that's one of the best moments in the show. I'm just saying, if Aaron, prote if Aaron Yeager at the end of Attack on Titan pretends that he was secretly the good guy all along and not just doing what he wanted to do. That's going to be real upsetting. Another thing I also dislike, a lot of a lot of complaints from Alex today. Alex is in a complainy kind of mood. Kenshi's Kenshi's put the grump in him. Kenshi's put the grumpiness in me. But yeah, I've um I had to get off of the Warhammer 40k subreddit recently. Uh, the reason being is that there was this negative thing, this horrible thing a player did at a local place. But instead of just handling it locally, the company decided to make a comment on it for probably the good PR boost. And it kind of became this thing where it's like, pretty much the player was being a racist and like you, like pretending to be part of the fact, one of the factions in Warhammer 40k, and basically using that as an excuse to be a racist and bigoted. However, what I didn't like is the response basically saying every faction in Warhammer is evil. Because one of the best things about Warhammer and some of the best stories in Warhammer is its moral complexity. It's the idea that, okay, yeah, you're evil, but look at what they're fighting against. Like, it's not just, there's no faction that is evil for the sake of being evil. Every Every action has a reason behind it that makes you understand why they're doing what they're doing. And I think that's one of the strongest things about Warhammer. Like, um, the orcs. Well, why do the orcs fight and kill people? It's like, well, because they're literally biological weapons that were then set free. And their entire culture and way of life is built off of violence and being skilled at violence. And... Literally, they were built for it. They have they have no other choice. They were racially built from the ground up to be violent. Um, orcs. I'm talking about orcs, by the way. Warhammer 40k orcs. Just want to clarify that. Um, then there's the Tyranids. All right. Why do the tyr Why do the Tyranids eat entire worlds? Well, the Tyranids eat entire worlds because they're giant bugs and they're very hungry and they want to accumulate biomass in order to spread and reproduce. The Necrons? Why do the Necrons invade entire worlds or wake up from underground and just conquer entire planets? Well, because they were the original, uh, they were the original owners of the galaxy, and they were basically a species that were enslaved and tricked out of, um, tricked out of their birthright. And so now they're trying to get back what was taken from them, however, the people that took it from them are long gone or enslaved by them, and so now there's a bunch of upstarts in the galaxy that have, you know, kind of taken their place. There's many, many factions like that in Warhammer that I find to be utterly fascinating, and, uh, yeah. Humanity is the biggest one, though. Humanity is everyone's favorite sticking point, everyone's favorite whipping boy. It's the most popular faction. Humani humanity in Warhammer has a problem that a lot of things in sci-fi settings have, or fantasy settings, which is, all right, we have this, we have to write a book about a faction. We have to, we have a really good writer and they're gonna write a really good book. What faction should they write it about? Well, we want the really good book to sell, don't we? Yes. All right, well, we'll write it about humanity. It's a good start for everyone, write a really good book. And so we wrote a really good book about humanity in Warhammer. And so then Warhammer, humanity in Warhammer gets even more popular. 
and they go, all right, well, they got really popular. We need to write another really good book. What should we write it about? And so the good books and the good games make the faction popular, and then the faction makes those books and games popular, and it's just this cycle of um, popularity that frustrates anyone who isn't a fan of humanity and Warhammer. And so rather than putting their money into those other factions, mm -hmm. they just complain about it on, mm. on Reddit. <laughs> it's I have I have real problems with Warhammer community, but like the uh, the one that I the one thing that comes to mind is that just mm. blanket referring to all races as evil, and I think good or good and evil are just a really simplistic way of viewing it, and I think it doesn't do it doesn't do it any justice, you know, like. Debating the good or evil nature of a Star Wars character is pretty cool because that's those are the rules that that world play by. But Warhammer itself seems to be really disinterested in discussing what is good or evil. And way more fascinated in, well, creating interesting brain candy with interactions with these factions. And I think that's all very fascinating. But yeah, humanity is, well, humanity. It's mankind who... Grew, who grew up and grew into the future of a galaxy full of creatures like the Tyranids, the Orcs, the Eldar, the Tau, and other alien races that hate them. Just by, just for existing, you know? Or races that want to remake them in what they think it should be. And so, they have made themselves just as cruel and as uh, effective of a fighting force as any race in the galaxy. And so... They have done a bunch of morally despicable things, time and time again. And rather than thinking about why they do these things, rather than wanting to explore why these actions are taken, and seeing what kind of characters we can create, what kind of interesting characters we can create, create out of this, the Warhammer community would much rather just dismiss the entire thing as being evil for the sake of being evil. Which I think is the least interesting way to look at Warhammer. It's weird, you know? It's weird that that's what comes to mind, though, is that I had to get off that Reddit, because just every single post was like, haha, humanity evil, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm not against that because I think that mankind from Warhammer is not evil. I'm against it because saying that they're evil is the least interesting way of looking at the character. It's like when people read Watchmen, and they go, you're not supposed to cheer for Rorschach. And it's like, okay then who am I supposed to cheer for? Who am I supposed to like? Rorsch Rorschach is literally the most likable character in Watchmen. He is... I always saw him as a morally flawed... A morally flawed, um... Detective. Similar to a lot of other detective stories. Like, like Bruce Wayne's a morally flawed detective. Uh, many... Like, any Sin City characters. But I still cheer for them because I don't have to... Agree with everything a character does in order to cheer them on. Oh. Lovely tri oh, I just got another trilobite. Okay, got it. But, um, yeah, I just, I find it kind of, I don't, I don't think you should tell people what to think about media. That's one thing I, I really don't agree with, and it's like, telling people they can't like certain characters or can't relate to certain characters is, it's kind of messed up, you know, because we experience media in order to find comfort and peace with what we enjoy, you know? Like, we, we... We watch media to have fake friends and to have characters that we relate to and can explore ourselves through them. And so being told that we can't like a certain character or being told that we can't relate to a certain character because they're evil and that if we relate to them we are evil, that's rather silly, don't you think? I don't know. Just some thoughts I have. You know, like media the way you want to like it, you know? I, I, I have no qualms with you. Today's a bit contentious, isn't it? Brain candy. It's the brain candy episode. Sometimes the candy's sour, sometimes the candy's spicy. But it's candy nonetheless, and you should enjoy it while you have it. What's a character that you- uh, here's my- I guess here's my prompt for the day. Because I, I have countless numbers of these. What's your favorite character that you're told you shouldn't like? Like, who do you like that you're told that you shouldn't like? Like, for me, it's Rorschach. I think Rorschach from Watchmen is a very interesting, very flawed character. And I like him a lot. He's my favorite character in Watchmen. Uh, I like Omni-Man from Invincible. Again, interesting, morally flawed character. Uh, do I... 
I, I like it when he's on screen. Would I want to be his friend in real life? No, because, well, real life and fiction are not the same thing. And But there are things about Rorschach that I relate to, just like there's things about Patrick Bateman I, or J the Joker that I relate to. That's what makes really strong villains. The best of villains are the one. The best heroes and villains are the ones that you have something you can relate to them with. Uh, the best villains are the ones who have a motivation that's arguably stronger than the heroes. Uh, my my little my my little friend here, Penny the kitten, has now climbed up onto the desk and is watching my screen. And I hope she likes to. Ch I hope she just chills here for a minute. I, I miss having kittens on my desk. As a cat, I let my friends play on my owner's desk. Hey, little Penny. <sighs> I am really sorry if anything I've said today has made you guys uncomfortable. I I'm not trying to upset no one. I'm just, you know, talking about what I want to talk about. Even the people in the Warhammer subreddit, I don't agree with you guys, but I would never wish anything bad upon any of you. I Let's just talk more about Warhammer, because I want to talk about it. And if you guys don't know what Warhammer is, uh, just do a quick Google, Warhammer 40k. Um, it's a tabletop strategy game that had a bunch of lore written for it in books, and then the, the lore was so good that those books became games, and sometimes animations. But yeah, Warhammer. Really good fantasy setting. Uh, so I realize I've increased my, my gyroid count today by a factor of two. This is great news. Anyway. Alright, do I have any shirts I want to sell? Vassif Tech. I'll think about it. I'll consider your offer, uh, Sophie. Skelly still playing Fallout. That's cool. Vinfi. Oh well, thank you, Kotanin Kirub. I can't read that text. I'm sorry. I know none of those letters are pronounced the way I pronounce them. It's just how I like to pronounce them. Nothing personal, of course. But, um... Yeah, what was the other thing I was going to say about Warhammer? I, I, I have a lot of Warhammer stuff on the brain. Um, I remember one of the posts I made is just like, Why are we complaining about the rules in this pay-to-win strategy game? Because that's what it is. You literally buy your units. If you, if you want to win at Warhammer or competitive Warhammer, just look at the meta, buy the units you want to buy, and use the best strategy for them, but you're paying real money, and sometimes the most powerful army is the most expensive. This also happens in fighting games, too, where they'll make the most... They'll release a new character, and they will not balance them as well as they would the others, leaving them somewhat overpowered, because they want people to buy them so that they can be the best. Like, pick a top tier is a common thing people will actually do in a competitive game. Uh... However, sorry about that, um, the thing I wanted to say about the Warmer Red is that everyone's sitting here complaining about, complaining about, like, the balance of their armies. Meanwhile, I'm just reading great books and great, playing great games. Like, I'm, I'm a total, I think I'm at this point, I, through the necessity of funding and for the necessity of me not having any money, I think I'm going to be a secondary to Warhammer pretty much forever. Like, I bought some, I bought some minis, but I, and I bought the Kill Team rulebook. All I really need is a ruler if I want to start playing, but... Do I want to? You know? Like, maybe someday, but right now it's too expensive, and also because of quarantine I can't really go to stores and actually play games with people. And so, Warhammer for me, ever since the beginning, has been a series of fantastic books, podcasts, uh, YouTube videos, and games that I really, really enjoy. And I think a lot of people... I think a lot of... Otaku and geeks in general would be much happier if they knew, if they really knew when they were being exploited by something they loved. Like, I got a friend in the Discord who loves Halo Infinite. But all, I got two, I got multiple friends in the Discord who love Halo Infinite, and all they do is just complain about it all the time, is how, how terrible the microtransactions are and how much they're being exploited, and I'm just like, why don't you just play something else? Because it's not going to get better. Like, I don't think it's... Like, here's the thing. I'm, this isn't like a blanket thing I go. I, I think things have a chance of getting better in general, but in the case of a video game whose best finan whose vested financial interest is in exploiting you... Oh, that's a lawn chair. Ooh, I'll take it. That sounds great. 
Let's see if it fits in my house. But uh, if you if you're playing a game or participating in something that's vested in financial interest isn't exploiting you and basically mistreating you, why would you keep and why would you keep doing anything with it? I guess the argument that they have is that the game's fun, and that's great. If the game's fun, that's great. But you're not having fun. You're not talking about what crazy play you pulled off. You're talking about how miserable you are about the about the microtransactions, and it's giving me the impression that you really don't like the game. And you know what? That's okay. I, I get it. I just don't understand why you would torment yourself like that, because... I don't know. I don't think I ever had a game that did that to me, that I wanted to keep playing, that I was being exploited financially with. Because the closest thing would be Overwatch, and that's the thing. I go, I bought 50 boxes in Overwatch one time, and it's like... A lot of people go, oh, hey, listen to you judging me for the microtransaction thing, but the difference is... I never had to buy a character, and I could have earned all that myself, but at the time I wanted to get- I wanted to spend the money on the boxes. Do I regret it? Absolutely. I regret it every day. Eh, that fits alright, I guess. I could use a- yeah, I could use a chair. Anyway. My house is becoming less of a house and more of a display for my nice furniture. But, um, did I have to buy the boxes? No, I wanted to. Because it was fun to open the boxes, and I had a lot of fun with Overwatch. Like, back when I bought those boxes, the game was fantastic, and I had a great time playing it. That changed over time when the character, a lot of the characters that I enjoyed playing were so heavily modified, they were unrecognizable as their original selves. I, I, people would make the argument, you should adapt, but like, the game I, I played when it came out simply doesn't exist anymore, and it was taken from me. And I don't think I'll ever go back to playing it because of that. That's the closest thing to financial exploitation the game ever did to me, but even then it would never make me need to buy the boxes. I, I could always earn them. I don't know. I guess it's because it's less cool to like Overwatch than it is to like Halo, and you know what, I can agree with that, however, that game in particular did never, never exploited me, and I think, I, I think we need to be a lot more picky. I think people need to really go out of their way to find what they like and enjoy what they like as fans of things, and of course, there are some people that would rather spend the money than play. And that's less of a, that's a lot less of a skill, like I'm not saying they're not skilled enough to earn what they want, it's more of a, the, g the game has made this intentionally time consuming, so why grind for it when you can pay for it? And of course, you're being exploited during that process, of course, however, I, I have, my boss has money to burn, or my, back when I worked at this place, my, I was friends with my boss, and he really enjoyed Madden on the phone. Not Madden on the consoles or anything, but Madden on the phone, and... He, had, he was an adult that had a lot of disposable income. And so every week, he would draw, him, him and a bunch of friends would drop a bunch of money on their Madden League because they wanted to, you know, get higher in the leaderboards or whatever. And uh, he didn't have to waste too much time playing it. He enjoyed playing it, of course, but he just didn't have the time to burn. He, you know, he, went, he liked to golf, he had, work, he had a lot of work to do. So I can understand why someone who has a lot of disposable income would enjoy a game like that. Ooh, you're a big boy! You're a big lad. What do we got here, Mr. Fishy? Got him. Oh, it's a tire. It's a tire. Oh. <laughs> oh, Penny. They tricked me. Penny looked at me like I was crazy. Hello, Penny. I poke you with my paw. Sure am, Emeralds. Uh, you already got it back, so I can forget about it. No big deal. Don't feel too bad, but maybe you can help me out next time. That'd be really sweet of you, you know? I totally forgot. Robin's- yeah, the picture book Robin Bob. Oh, Big Tire scammed you. Heck you, Big Tire. Let me help. Yeah, I can go find Tutu. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Let's go help out- let's go help out Em. Uh, we should go visit Bob, our favorite animal. Um... But yeah, I don't know. Like what you want to like, but probably try to understand when you're try to understand when you're in a in an abusive relationship with what you enjoy and don't like when people criticize what you enjoy, try to avoid making excuses for it. And if you find yourself you're find that you're at a point where you don't enjoy it anymore and that you in that what people are saying about it is making you miserable because it's true, maybe stop playing it or don't. But the point of media is to have fun and to relax from our daily lives. 
if you don't find it stimulating and enjoyable in its entirety, perhaps you should move on and try to find something different. Or you can power through and see if you enjoy it more. Like, I'm sure that if I started playing Kenshi without having several YouTube videos and a friend to help, and friends to help guide me through it, I do not think I'd enjoy that game very much. But because I went in knowing what to expect, I was able to really enjoy it. You know what? Let me tell you my Kenshi story so far. My cat, cat, get off the mouse. Thank you. Cats like mice. We do. It's true. Um, but yeah, uh, Kenshi is super fun. Kenshi is a role-playing game that can be found on Steam. Uh, check it out if you if you're able to. Uh, where you play as a scavenger in a post-apocalyptic alien world, and you get to make your character. I made my character Kelfi. Now, Kelfi was a very ruthless, cold woman. She was pretty much just waiting for her big moment. She was a scavenger, and she got her start mining iron outside of this, outside of town. And after enough time, she found an opportunity. One day, an outside group of... If you find a robot, you're going to want one. All right, gotcha. It, uh, one day outside of town, she encountered a group of bandits and then got attacked by the city guards. One bandit in the group, however, was left alive. And it was the bandit leader. And Kelthy knew that she had an opportunity at this point to improve her combat skills and to actually learn how to use a sword. And so, she grabbed, she grabbed two swords from the from the bodies from the wreckage of the bat of combat and also tipped uh nursed the bandit leader back to health took her found an abandoned building in town and laid her down on the floor and waited for the bandit lady to wake up the, she armed the bandit lady and she waited for the woman to wake up and so when the lady woke up kelthy attacked her kelthy's whole plan was that she would kidnap this woman and basically force her to fight her in order to improve her combat skills. However, what ended up happening instead is that when the woman woke up, she was far too much of a... she was uh, more than more than a match for uh, Kelphie. And Kelphie kept finding herself getting seriously injured, and so eventually she had to just release the woman into the wild. At this point, she felt experienced enough, and she was pretty much getting tired of living where she was living, and so she made her way uh, to the town to the north or to the, to the west, and decided to, and decided to go, you know, continue her mining career there, because she was barely getting anything for the iron, uh, where she was at this point, and so she made her way to the western town. There she met a slave woman named Meow, however, Meow was still enslaved and she couldn't be freed for less than 6,000 cats, the currency, uh, the currency of, uh, Kenshi. I had never- I have never won a fight against Hungry Bandits. I want to, though. But... Kelthy and Meow became good friends, and they began recruiting- they began recruiting more people and making more money off of Copper. They gathered whatever gear they could off of, uh, nearby combat encounters, waiting for the fighting to end, and then they'd ran, run in and clean up the bodies and kill any survivors in order to, uh, increase their sword skills, which is- in, in order to, you know, they'd practice on the- barely alive hungry bandits and such, enslavers and such. And so at this point, Healthy, Meow, and a bunch of other companions are now all in a big group ready to take on the world. And at this point, they were all very excited. They are like, yeah, we can do anything. There's like seven of us. Nothing can defeat us. And so they ran into the wilderness, and they looked at their maps, and they, on, on their map is a are these snowy white-topped mountains. And so they made their way to the mountains, and, uh, along the way, they encountered a gorilla. And when they saw the gorilla, they're like, There's seven of us, we all have swords, we can take them. And so they attacked the gorilla. And the gorilla made very short work of them. Most of their blades didn't even hit, or when they did hit, they barely seemed to pierce the skin. After that, half of them, most of them got knocked out, all but two, who then ran. Um, those two eventually returned to save their companions and ended up killing the gorilla. It was a uh, triumphant moment for the two of them. However, they then realized that their five companions were down to three. 
and that two of them had gone missing. And then and there were tracks leading away from the site of the bodies, and so they followed it to a cannibal camp. And at the cannibal camp, the, the, the two missing companions were tied to posts. There were a tribe of tiny cannibals that had kidnapped them. And so now, where is Tutu? My goodness, she is the animal that most consistently goes missing. Apparently last time I played, I had like walked by Tutu like four times. I know Tutu, trying to find you, you. Um... So yeah, I lost the fight against the gorilla, and then we had to- then I'm like, alright, well, down there in the grass are the two posts. We can we can sneak down there, all four of us. Or all, uh, all five of us could sneak down there, and we could quickly undo their bonds, and, you know, get our friends back. And so they did. The, the five of them snuck down there. However, as they were sneaking, the grass stood up. <laughs> And it turned out the grass was just a bunch of cannibals with green tattoos. And so now they had to fight the cannibals and they were quickly overwhelmed and they lost. And then everyone was tied, tied to a post, except for the one injured party member who was left in the hills surrounding the village. And so then, uh, I think his name was Sevak. Uh, we'll, get th we'll get to the giraffe enemies, Hammer. <laughs> uh, Sev Sevak, or whatever his name was waited on the hill for his opportunity, and he found it. A bunch of nomadic animal traders came by and attacked the cannibals. And so while the two of them were warring it out, Savak uh, ended up saving everybody. One at a time, they, he began undoing their bonds, and all of them were trying to undo their own bonds at that point, and eventually they, were all, they all escaped their bindings. And soon they were on their way. Uh, however, most of them had taken heavy injuries. For example, Kelthy could no longer wield a sword because both of her arms were broken. They also couldn't find the the, play, the time to uh, rest because they were worried... They could have rested at the cannibal camp in order to heal. However, they were worried that there would be another patrol of cannibals that would come in there and attack them. And so what they instead decided to do was test their luck against the wilderness. They would try to mark, march back to the starting village. However, that's when the giraffes attacked. <laughs> And well, the giraffes made short work of the entire party. After a couple bites, everyone went down. And not only did they go down, they all went unconscious. Several of them went into healing comas, several were bleeding out from the bites. And the giraffes... They're, they're, okay, to be fair, these giraffes I'm describing are not actual giraffes. They are, in fact, closer to... In design, they're very close to tall herbivore dinosaurs, such as the Brachiosaurus or the... Di yeah, the, Brach the Brachiosaurus would be the best example. Uh, however, they were coniv they're carnivorous, and well, uh, the six of them ate most of the party. They began nibbling on the party a little bit at a time, until all but two were left, Meow and one other companion. Kelthy got eaten first, and well, I lost my starting character. And so, after Kelthy was eaten, guess who showed up to save the day? A gorilla. The gorilla ran in and just started kicking the crap out of the dinosaurs, and the dinosaurs retreated long enough for Meow to stop playing dead and for her to grab her last remaining companion who had lost both of her legs and was bleeding to death. And so Kelthy, or Meow, uh, pulled the companion onto her back and be began carrying him back to town, and halfway down, halfway there, even with Meow's first aid, it wasn't enough, and the man led to death. And so now Meow was all alone and heading back to the town of her mentor. Kelthy was a very good friend to her, taught her how to mine, taught her how to sword fight, basically showed her the ropes, how to survive and such, and well... <sighs> they're gone now, and now it's just, uh, just Meow. No, you can get prosthetics and such. There, there's, there's goods and bads to losing limbs. And so after that, Meow befriended a cook in the town named Molly. And Meow and Molly picked up where they left off and started hitting rocks. Started mining. And uh, they, they had to fight off the bandits every now and again. And this time, instead of Meow running away, she stood her ground and fought. Uh, did not wanting to run into the same thing she had before, she wanted to actually fight and survive. And so, in doing so, she got knocked out a couple times. However, her and Molly always got back on their feet. And continued mining. Every night they'd lay in bed and let their injuries heal. 
And then every morning they'd go out and mine rocks again until eventually they were ready to go back to that western town and begin building up troops again. Well, what had happened then was unfortunate as they got caught in a, as they were mining, uh, hungry, band, uh, hungry bandits, dust bandits, and a group of slave mongers all fought right on top of them. Um, Molly got knocked unconscious. Meow was able to stand her ground and defend herself for long enough. However, she got hit in the back of the head, and, well, she got captured as a slave. However, she got, uh, she got branded and cuffed. So, they hadn't taken her to the slave camps yet, and due to the skill she had earned from escaping from the cannibals, she quickly made short work of the shackles, breaking them, or, uh, picking her way out of them, and getting away. Later on, she tried, uh, after the battle, or during the battle, she found Molly, took her to a near side, took her to a nearby ditch, and tried nursing her back to health. Um, this worked, and Molly was able to be returned to consciousness. Not before, uh, however, shortly after, they were attacked by the leader of the slave mongers, who was heavily injured, but still wanted his slave back. And just as as uh, as Meow was working on the guy, as Meow was trying to heal her friend, the guy runs up, swings his sword once. Meow's leg goes fl or not Meow's, uh, Molly's leg goes flying, and. Uh, Meow immediately cuts the guy down quickly and begins trying to patch up her friend. Uh, during this process, she also scavenges armor from the slave monger and ends up using it to, as a disguise to hide the fact that she is in fact a slit and escaped slave. Because they already branded her. Yeah. It is really cool. Yeah, robotic legs are cool. I, uh, but... Yeah, so Meow threw on her armor, her newfound slave armor, which strikes fear into the hearts of everyone around her, and uh, t tried carrying her bleeding friend to the inn. However, instead of Molly dying, she simply fell into a healing coma and recovered. Problem is, now she only has one leg and cannot mine. This doesn't stop Molly. This is not going to be enough for Molly to or Meow to kick Molly out of the party. So now, uh, well, Molly mostly rides around on Meow's back. Um. She's usually there, she or she'll lay on the ground next to her while she mines. The two are the... I, I like to think the two of them are still very good friends, and at this point, they've begun building up their ranks more, and now they have an entire population of people to work with. If any of this sounds interesting to you, viewer, you can... I strongly recommend trying out Kenshi. You can find a free demo of it on their website. Hey, there's an axe. I don't want the axe right now, but what I will grab instead are these flowers. I bet you this is still the square in town that needs help. Heck, one moment, one moment, Nook, let me sell you some stuff. I like to sell. But yeah, Kenshi's really cool. It's been my newest gaming obsession. I've had a lot of fun. Uh, actually, let's check turn prices first. No. Other things? Turner prices? 85 bells? Ew, no. Uh, no, I have 170. I paid 170 for him, I'm gonna get more than 170. Anyway, boop. Trilobite, small bass, pond smelt, barbel steed, barbel steed, bitterling, dace, sea bass, sea bass, sea bass. Oh. I'll sell. But yeah, if any of that sounds interesting to you, dear viewer, I recommend picking up Kenshi. It's a lot of fun. It's a it's a hard game. In the beginning, you're gonna want to load. You're gonna want to quick save a lot, and really, you're gonna want to load the save whenever you get into a combat encounter. However, as time goes on, uh, I recommend saving less and less because that's what happened to me. In the beginning, I save scummed a lot, but as time went on, I played more and more over the first few days. I just stopped saving, or I stopped loading my quick saves because the outcome of what happens to you is super duper interesting. Like losing a fight in Kenchi doesn't usually end in your death unless it's a really bad loss like those dinosaurs they ruined me that 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 dinosaur situation was the only time that ever happened however um 
once I triumphed over them, it created this interesting narrative about Meow and Molly and what all they had not gotten done. And you, that's the biggest thing I, I could say about Kenshi is that learn to accept that you learn to accept failure and learn from it because if you don't, you're not going to have a good time. Like if you if if your first thought when you see all of your all all of your characters flop over on the ground unconscious is I lost the game then you're probably not going to have a good time with Kenshi. And, and really, you just want to treat it like it's a movie or a story you're watching and just make the most of it, you know? Our things. Is it A1 again? Is it A1 again? Yeah, it is A1 again. All right, time to plant even more flowers. I don't know what to what's to be done about A1 because I've planted an entire... Oh yeah, probably. When I finally make a base, I'll save scum. I don't know what's going on with tile A1 because I have planted so many flowers and trees in this thing. Plant. There's so much green in this acre. Dum 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 dum. So many trees. So many trees that I don't know where to plant them anymore. Let's try here, I guess. I hope you grow into a fully grown tree, little guy. All right, let's head over to the dump and drop off this uh, drop off this tire. And grab some stationery. Yeah, tile A1 is definitely owned by Big History. I have some things I still don't quite understand about Kenshi. Um, I really need to get a feel for the combat because it's really really strange. I, I get the feeling it's far more strategic than I'm thinking because. Well, I mean, I've seen characters slash, but it's not like dice rolls are being made about whether or not an attack hits. The attacks just seem to come out and, like, hit what they hit, you know? Like, the sword actually has to hit the guy's body for the attack to be registered versus a dice roll. And so what I'm thinking is that I need to actually take more of a vested interest in control in combat. Here's the question, I usually send off five of these fossils every day. How come I'm only getting three in the mail per day? Does it take multiple days to identify certain fossils? Who knows? Who knows? What I can say... Oh yeah, let's just put a tire in there. Whoopsie. Let's remove the old tire, why don't we? Let's put my stationary back. Alright, cool. Is it a dice roll? Okay. One thing I can't say is really cool is that my main character has become really good at defending from sword strikes, and so like enemies will swing at her back and she'll just quickly spin her sword back there and deflect the blow. And it's super cool to watch her go from like a clumsy fumbling dingus to like a vicious... Well, I mean, she's not there yet, and I'm gonna need to get into a lot more combat encounters before she will. Uh, I found some training dummies I could use to improve my skills, however, uh, I got attacked for using them, so that's not fun. Maybe I can build a training dummy. Hey, Bob. Have you seen Tutu anywhere, Bob? No, Alex, you've got one unusual name. Can I help out? Okay. Let's go visit Billy. Man, Bob, you look so good in HD. HD Bob. I have this thing where I try to avoid any input on something that I enjoy while I'm enjoying it. Like, right now I'm playing this and I saw a video yesterday that criticized, or before I played it, played it as well, that was criticizing a bunch of villager decisions in New Horizons. Now, I didn't watch that video because, well, I haven't played New, New Horizons, my, I almost called it New Horizons, uh oh. I haven't played New Horizons myself yet, and so... I didn't want to taint my opinion on the game before I had even played it myself. Not that I'm afraid of other people's opinions, it's just in this case, I wanted to go into the game as raw as I could as I possibly could. One thing I do that does make me 2 2, I found you, you! I'm picking up. Well, now we have Emerald's uh, tank at you. Let's drop that off real quick. Great, cool, go get him. Will do, Tutu. But, uh... 
Yeah, I just wanna, I, I just wanna kind of form my own opinion and experiences. Hit her with a net. No, I will never hit Emerald with a net. He's a friendly frog. Hello, friendly frog. I am Mr. Frog. I eat the bug. I ate the bug. I love you. The end. Hello. <laughs> I am really sad I can't find- I can't watch Smiling Friends on any websites. I, um, I don't have cable, you see, so I wasn't able to catch it, and adults will more, their website will let me watch more than the first episode. Hey, Mr. Frog. Alright, now to go find Billy. Ah! My main character is actually, I, I've been trying to basically turn her into a, to the tank. Um, my main character is dead, Meow. I've been trying to turn Meow and Kenshi into a tank. Um, I got her some really good heavy armor. I got her a horse cleaver, which is a sword that allows her to uh, defend a lot better. And yeah, I'm trying to basically turn her into the tank. I've also turned on her ta taunt function and her block ability, so she will constantly be like yelling at... She'll just be screaming the whole time constantly be yelling at the other fighters in order to get their attention. I'm picking up. Yeah, no problem, Billy. But, um... Yeah, I miss Fartle, too. Fartle, Fartle died horribly. He was, what, eaten by wolves? Like, it was awful. There was Fartle, and then, then, then there was Beardlet. And I didn't, I didn't really enjoy the demo version of Kenshi, so I went and snagged the full version. And, uh, well, Kelfi was really cool. Owl called her Keith. Um, however, well, she died horribly. She was eaten alive by giant giraffe dinosaur snails. I'm thinking of splitting my party into two parties because I have. My, or currently, I have too many people in the party to actually mine, so most of them just ended up standing standing around all day. And I can't find any copper vein that's large enough for three people, so. Yeah. I did a I did unlock a bunch of new locations on the map, so my goal right now is probably just to. Uh, I got a new shirt. Let's check it out. Ooh, I like that one. I'll wear that today. Alright, let's, uh... You know, I'm in no hurry today. Let's see if Bobbin needs any more work done. I do. Uh, sure, if Chuck's awake. Knowing Chuck, he's probably asleep. He's a lazy bones. Anyway. Yeah, I uh really like him, Kenshi. Right now I'm my current link current goal is to build up enough people, get them fully equipped and armed, and uh head on back to the western village in order to basically form a militia and do battle with the dust band or to do battle with the hungry bandits and see if I can get them all to improve at what improve at fighting. I think my, I might set a few of them up as archers because we don't have any like long range people in the party. It's all it's all a bunch of sword wielders, and I don't think all of them need to have katanas. I could use some more variety because I get the feeling that the sword fighters on their own aren't going to be able to do the job. However, if we had some more variety. If we had people up front just built to take hits, and then we had people in the back who used ranged weapons, we could have a, a proper little militia going on. And of course, when I max out my ranks, I'll move on to the next town and gather more people. Because right now, I'm running out of people to recruit. Like, I don't think I have anybody in the current town I'm in that will actually be recruited by me. So I'm gonna basically wage war on the bandits and slavers. Alright, what'd I get? I got the fish. Hmm. 
I am Mr. Frog. This is my show. I eat the bug. I eat the bug. I love you. The end. <laughs> War. Yep. Waging war on the hungry bandits and slavers, what they did to my friends. I had one, uh, I had one bandit show up and stand on top of a rock, and they were just like, I don't want to fight, I'm outnumbered, leave me alone. And so I went to go try and kill them, but then I got stuck on the rock. And I think they were, I think they just got stuck on that rock until they eventually escaped and they tried, to, you know, to walk by me. However, Immediately after they starved to death and passed out on the ground and a puppy and a puppy came by and I'm like oh puppy I'm not gonna bother with you because you killed one of my friends once and so I just kind of kept working on my rock leaving the puppy alone as he like nibbled on her and I'm like oh yeah you, you can eat a foot or whatever and th then I looked again after like two days of hard work and I realized he had eaten all of her like the little puppy just ate the woman whole or just nibbled on her bit by bit over the course of 48 hours and just ate her entire body and so i tried getting a puppy early on in the game however he died because he just wouldn't eat any of the meat i gave him and so i'm thinking that if i decide to ever wage war when i when i when i decide to wage war with the bandits i should get a whole crew of them purely for cleanup and so they could you know eat grow strong yeah, I think I'll get- I think I'll start off with like three of them, you know? Because I can afford three of them, they're only a thousand. And just have them kind of hang around in the back lines while we- well, the, you know, the humans do all the- are the- the horned people and the one human do all the fighting. You know, I wonder- I wonder if Molly would be any good with a crossbow. She's missing a leg, but she can still lay prone and shoot. Who knows? Right now, she literally just hangs on my main character's back. Oh yeah, I need to go visit Chuck. Whoopsie. <sighs> of course you're sleeping, Chuck. Well, that delivery is going to have to wait till tomorrow. Let's go see if we can help out. Any of the locals. Penny, please get your head out of the cup. It'll get stuck. I might make a Fartle Jr. one day. Or Fartle the second. Yo, Dagnabbit! Give me work. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I gotta go visit Velma and give her watch back. Yeah, let's go. Penny likes to watch me play. Penny is one of my most... Um, one of my best viewers. She just chills on my desk or... Or on the desk or another, or another service nearby and, like, watches the screen. Hey, Mr. Frog. This is my show. I eat... I, I watched the second first two episodes of Smiling Friends. I haven't been able to watch any of any of the other ones that came out. Kind of bummed, kind of bummed about it because I was really excited for it. But none of the sites I frequent for uh, shared entertainment seem to like Smiling Friends as much as I do, and it's a real bummer. Crucian mm. Carp. Right, let's go visit Velma. But yeah, once I get a nice pack of uh, bone dogs with me, I'll be able to have a means of, and I can start working on feeding them. The main issue isn't going to be is going to be both winning fights and also maintaining my ranks, because I have no more people to recruit. I guess when I fully when the bo when the bone dogs fully grow up, I'll be able to um, I'll be able to recruit them. And then they can clean up the bodies and get get stronger. Yeah, rip rip in peace to Ozzy the bone dog, the dog I got that didn't quite make it because he refused to eat. I gave him chunks of meat all the time. I took him near bodies. He just would not eat, and so he died. Sad, sad puppy. Anyway, Lima, 
Let's go talk to Vlima. Delivery! Give. You have to watch behind. Let's see what looks on me. I like to give me a lot of clothes. That's pretty bad. At least it's at least it's like a decent resolution. So the real question now is do I want to time travel in order to get the delivery to delivery to Chuck or do I want to or do I want to actually wait it out and just run the stream that long? All right, let's head down south and check. Your house is creepy. Like, very, very creepy. Why do you live like this? Oh, here comes the tree, Anne. No, oh, it's the job for you then. Hey there, Betty. I am. Give me work. Stop being mean. It was really creepy, man. Oh my gosh. Ah yes, you lent... You lent your Pokemon Pikachu to the infamous Tutu. The one who always goes missing and is impossible. Impossible to find. Like, I think I like Tutu and Chuck the least. Like, Tutu's not mean, don't get me wrong, but Chuck is- Chuck's really mean, and he's really hard to find because he wakes up so late. Hey, Emerald. Uh, and anyone who ever gives me a delivery to Chuck is just like, alright, cool, I'll, I'll just- I'll do that tomorrow when I log in, or like, after the stream's over. Because he's never awake during the time that I'm playing. Yeah, Tutu's the disappearing- the amazing disappearing bear. Because Tutu just- she, she's never where you want her to be. Like, you go to check her house and she's just not there, and then she's, like, impossible to find. Maybe when the snow clears up, she'll be easier to find. Here she is. Hey there, disappearing bear. I'm picking up. I did. If you, if you lent it to Chuck, I'm gonna cry. It's Robin. Oh, hey, is Robin awake? I hope Robin's awake. Alright, cool. Betty and Robin, alright. So it shouldn't take too long. Assuming that he's actually awake. Hit 2-2 two -two with Big Net. Oh, I don't want to upset. Do -do. I don't want upset. Do -do. Anyway. I always liked the way that the stick wiggled. Like the, the fishing rod wiggled when you walked. Look at me, I'm such a happy little green fella. I look like Link. No, I don't. I wonder, like, I can't remember, but, like, in the later games, if you make a hat, like, just a decent hat. Because I know in Wild World you could put on the original horns if you just made a hat pattern. But I don't remember if it's like that with, uh, the later games. <sighs> yeah, no problem, Robin. It's not great. Lack of sleep is, like, one of those things I really need to get a handle on. All right, let's go find Emerald. Also, you also have a creepy house, Robin. Like again, how you keeping birds, man? You're a bird. Just doesn't make sense. Then again, I'm a cat with pet cats, so I, I don't know what to tell you. 
Hey, I am the one who figured out how to use the computer, so Liara and Penny get to be the cat, get to be the ones that walk around on four legs, whereas I can sit up here at this desk and just pretend to be a human on the internet. Ah ha 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 ha! Also, really good, uh, really good meow to speech software. Apparently, there are these uh, two tiny like bark to speech and meow to speech. Not quite speech, but like it reads animal emotions. Not as quite as advanced as the software I'm using to talk to you guys. But like, really cool. And you know what's funny about the, the, they're okay. They were little devices that you, you could like have a dog bark into it, and it would tell you how the dog was feeling. Same thing goes for a cat with their meows and hisses and such. Um, however, what's cool about them is they both had compatibility with Animal Crossing and what unlocks special villagers for the game that were modeled after the devices, which I thought was super cool. But that was only in the Japanese only version of the game called like Animal Crossing Plus or Dobutsu. The Boots on the Mori E Plus, I think is what it was called. And it was interesting because it was actually the Japanese localized version of this game specifically that added extra content. So yeah, uh, it got remade for the GameCube in America with extra... It, Animal Crossing was a, was a Nintendo 64 game. It got remade for the GameCube in America, or re-released for the GameCube in America and ported and like localized in English and added a bunch of extra English content. And then they then translated that content back to Japan with their new GameCube version and added the content, added even more content to the game, specifically with uh, e-reader functionality. Yay, Betty. I got a special word for you. Furniture. What kind of furniture? What'd I get? What do we got? Uh, we got an Apple TV? Oh, wow. You know, I think I... It'd be nice to have a TV. Let's go ahead and drop it off at the house. Unless... Hey, Emerald, you got a job for me? That's okay. But, uh... Anyway, yeah, I thought it was a really cool aspect of the Japanese-only version. I can't really be bummed about any new content that version has compared to the regular GameCube version because... Well, all that content made it to either Wild World or City Folk in some form or another later on. So again, can't be upset about it. Let me head back to uh, head back to my house. I always get really upset whenever a new version of a game is released for full price with only a little bit more content. Because I just go, why don't you just add that content to the original game for like 10 bucks? I never quite got it. What? Sometimes you get lucky and it's, in, <laughs> and it's insubstantial. I remember that was a big controversy with fighting games. For, uh... Hmm. I guess I can sell this. That was a big controversy with, um... Fighting games for a while. Where every single time a new one would come out, people would get upset that... The, that the game they just purchased was rendered obsolete. Which is a way of looking at it, but people that actually played fighting games a lot really actually liked these re-releases and were very excited for them. You guys like Tetris? Or you like uh, block pushing puzzles? Because that's what I'm doing right now. Spin the gyroid. But I personally always disliked those, because it was just like, well, I just bought the game, why... You're making me buy another, like, I need to buy another one if I want all the content? What the hecky? Good ol' furniture Tetris, make the game bug out again. I want to. Oh, you mean you want me to boot up to try and get Excite Bike running, Excite Bike running again? <laughs> That's actually kind of tempting, I might do that. I'll sell that sweater because I just don't like it. We got the red grid shirt, which I'll sell, the winter sweater, which I'll sell, and the jagged shirt, which. Uh, I might. Hmm, I don't know, I might store that in the gyroid. I can't. I'm not sure yet.
And I have a show about apples. Yay. Anyway. Hey there, guy ride. Thank you. Got an item. Mm, let's store the winter sweater. I'm, I think I think Vea will like the winter sweater. That price. Yeah, and then the rest I can sell. Oh, I gotta shake the big soda. I forgot. All right. Anyway. Yeah, there we go. But yeah, the way I guess the way you're supposed to look at it, or the certain people look at it, is that the new version adds content. But for me, I just go, all right, well, now I own a lesser version of the game. Like, I remember when the Nintendo Switch version of Devil May Cry 3 came out. And they, re they released the game with the ability to style switch. I was just like, oh man, well now I own a worse version of the game. Versus going, oh hey, this new version's better. It's not, nah, the old one's worse. <laughs> I could just mod the, I should probably just mod the style switching in. Because it's just a mod you could get that they added to the, uh, the Switch version. But I don't want to download a mod. Eh, I will. It's not a good game. Hey, you know what's awesome? Yakuza. I've been thinking so much about Yakuza 0 right now. Like, I've been really wanting to go back through. Like, I just play more of it. It's the game I'm currently streaming, and I'm currently dealing with that thing I dealt with, with uh, uh, specifically Fallout 2 and New Vegas, where I'm just excited to go back to it. And I'm just like, all right, Saturday, come on. Or Friday, hurry up. Hurry up and get here. For, or, yeah, sorry, Saturday. Hurry up and get here. I want to play more Yakuza. Or Friday, hurry up and get here. I want more papers, please. Sell. All right, let's uh, let's sell all these fish and this shirt. Yes. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go pay off our loan. I think. You get the big weekend off, so you, so you get to wait till Thursday. What's going on Thursday? Start of the big weekend? Probably right. Oh, I should look at his wallpaper and see if it matches my uh, my flooring. <laughs> Let's see it. Blech. No, 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 no. Oh, my goodness, no. Oh, jeez, no. Oh no, that's bad. Let me through, Nook. I gotta get out of here. Honestly, I'm probably just gonna play more Kenshi after this is over. I, I really like Kenshi so far. Uh, probably be if I'm not stream, let me see what I got going on this Sunday. Actually, let me. I should. I should probably publish a stream schedule, shouldn't I? That's probably the smart thing to do. Okay. Wow. I I got a big. Oh, I got a big weekend ahead of me. I'm gonna be busy. Oh boy. Boy. Oh boy. All right, so yeah, this Friday, I have D&D, &D, followed by Papers, Please, on Twitch. Uh, Saturday is Yakuza. Sunday is D&D, &D, followed by, uh, followed by probably Kenshi. I think I'll do a Kenshi stream on Sunday. And just, like, not, don't do anything different than what I already do. It'll just chill out and chat and just talk to you guys while I just hit rocks with, with pickaxes. Um, anyway. Yeah, let's, um, let's make our way back home. Or let's make our way to the post office so I can mail these letters. And uh, also pay off my loan. And then save. And we'll check out our money tree tomorrow, too. The big weekend. Here you go. One. Yep. Two. Mail. Letters. 
I really hope you guys enjoyed the stream today. Sorry I've been so rambly lately. I really need to get my sleep, uh, I need, really need to get my sleep in order. Because I kind of slept in today. I slept till like 5 when I should have slept only till like 4. Gonna mail some letters. I hope you had fun. Do, 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 do. Rain, sleet, snow, or hail will deliver what you mail. Thank you. Alright, now I have to pay off the loon. I'm a stork, I know. Or, no, I'm a pelican, I know. <laughs> you pay off the loon. Yay, the loan's getting paid off. That means you still only still owe 65,000 bells. Should have that paid off within the week, right? Because I'm making a decent amount every day off the money rock and such. And if this goes right, I should hypothetically gain uh, 1,000 bells with, uh, or 3,000 bells from that when it fully grows. But there's a chance it might not. And so I, I will, I'll basically be trying to plant a money tree every day. Reburying that thousand I'd normally get and see if I can turn it into three thousand. Big money, big tree. Anyway, let me drop off my paper. Because for some reason my felt paper is still in my inventory when it really shouldn't be. Well, why don't we just write a let's just write a preemptive letter, why don't we? I always end up doing this anyway. I did this today on accident anyway, might as well get it out of the way. But yeah, I uh, really hope you enjoyed today's stream. Uh, be sure to leave a like, uh, subscribe if you like the video and want to see more from me. Uh, if you have any comments or concerns or just want to write a letter to me that I'll show on the show on Friday, be sure to comment down below in any of the any of these videos. Uh, also, could really I'll really appreciate the support if you like share it with your friends who also like Animal Crossing. I'm, I'm sure if you end up seeing it. Uh, anyways, Thank you for watching, and have a good day.